Hello, this video is for chapter 10 of Pelican Cove, The Chase, and we are seeing who Jimmy was talking to on the other end of the little bug that they had on him, and Granny and Hiram were looking for, um, for who it was too. So, chapter 10, The Chase. Still on the beach, Jimmy forgot all about the bug in his pocket. He began to back away from the man. Jake had called him Bill. Get away, he said again. When Bill grabbed for Blackie, the dog turned and ran into a crowded amusement park. Jimmy was right behind him. Blackie whipped out in and out without bumping anyone. Jimmy was not quite as good. In his effort to keep Blackie in sight, he stumbled against a large man. Popcorn showered around them. Hey, kid, the man shouted. Watch out, will ya? Jimmy yelled back over his shoulder. Sorry, but he didn't stop. Blackie was too far ahead. Jimmy was just in time to see a black tail disappearing under the counter of a ring toss booth. Jimmy scrambled under the counter. Get out of here, the attendant snapped. Crazy kids. He grabbed a broom and started thrashing at Blackie. Get out of here, dog. Blackie panicked and he tried to go over the back. One leap landed him into the duck pond. He slipped in the water. The ducks went down one by one. Then at last, a leap took him under the canvas curtain at the back. He was out and gone. Jimmy rolled back under the counter and headed around the booth. He looked frantically about. Blackie was nowhere to be seen. Then he saw the wet tracks. They led straight down the boardwalk. Jimmy groaned. Those tracks were right where Bill could see them too. Uh oh, what's gonna happen? Jimmy looked back quickly. The stringy haired man was still shoving his way through the crowd. Jimmy turned and ran. Jimmy caught up with Blackie. There was nowhere to hide and the wet tracks had left a clear trail. Jimmy dragged the protesting Blackie along by the collar. Without a leash, it was hard going. Then Blackie tried to go one way around a baby stroller and Jimmy, Jimmy tried to go the other. The baby screamed and the mother frowned. Jimmy had to let go. Then there was nothing he could do but to chase Blackie again. Blackie skidded to a stop beside the Ferris wheel. It had stopped to let passengers out. Blackie wagged his tail. Hey, Black, the operator said. How you doing, boy? Can we go up? Jimmy asked eagerly. Black, too? The man raised his eyebrows. I'll pay for him, Jimmy said. Just take us up. The operator shrugged his shoulders and said, okay, but you have to hang on to the dog. Jimmy dug in his pocket and he pulled out a water string, a dinosaur eraser, a piece of a crayon, and some pebbles. The operator was now getting impatient. Hey, kid, he said. I've got it. Jimmy dug into his other pocket and pulled out a rumbled up dollar and handed it to the man. Keep the change, he said. Thanks. Up you go. Jimmy took one last glance backward. Bill was only about 20 steps away. Jimmy darted into the seat, pulling Blackie with him. The bar slammed down. The sweet seat swung up and Jimmy stared down into Bill's dark, angry eyes. Bill pulled out some change and shoved it at the operator. He then stepped into his seat. Quickly, Jimmy pushed Blackie over the edge of theirs. Then he jumped after him lightly, landing on his feet. So Jimmy then jumped out of his cart. The operator of the Ferris wheel gave him a surprised look. He glanced from Jimmy to Bill and then he winked. With his usual, up you go, he started the motor and this time he did not stop for another passenger. The stringy haired man, went up to the very top, and then the operator stopped the wheel. Bill turned to look at the seat where he expected to see Jimmy and Blackie. Jimmy heard his outraged yell. So did the operator. You better get going, kid. I can't keep him up there forever. Jimmy grabbed Blackie and said thanks. Sure, do you need me to call the cops, the operator said. Jimmy just shook his head. Just leave him up there for a while if you can. This machine has a few kinks in it, the operator said. It hangs up like this every once in a while. Jimmy laughed and he and Blackie headed down the boardwalk. Thanks again, he yelled. Then all his attention was on Blackie. The dog was moving eagerly through the crowd again. It was almost as if he was going a regular route. Hey, Blackie, Jimmy said. Then he remembered what Hiram said about the amusement park. Do you come this way all the time? Blackie wagged his tail. He stopped at an ice cream booth and the attendant spoke to him. Then he saw Jimmy. I never saw you with Black before. He's usually all by himself. 
I'm staying for the summer, Jimmy said. Does he come this way often? Most every day, the lady replied. He likes my ice cream. Ice cream? Blackie? Sure, said the lady. She dropped a scoop on a paper plate and put it down for Blackie. He slurped it up greedily. Want one, she asked. How much, she, Jimmy said. He didn't have much money left after the Ferris wheel. Thinking of the money made him look back, and the man was still stuck on the top. It's on the house, replied the lady. Any friend of Blackie's is a friend of mine. Well, thanks, Jimmy said. He accepted a strawberry cone. He licked it and watched the Ferris wheel while he waited for Blackie to finish. When the dog was ready to move on, the lady was busy with other customers. She waved as they left. Blackie went around the other booths and headed down the beach. The amusement park was planning to expand in this direction. Construction work had already begun under the pines. Blackie led Jimmy past bulldozers and cranes. They scrambled down and then up the sides of the drainage ditch. Jimmy looked behind them. No one was following. He breathed a sigh of relief. I think we lost, lost him, Blackie. Suddenly, he remembered the bug. He turned his head and spoke loudly towards his pocket. We lost him. When Blackie stopped to jig, dig, Jimmy sat down to rest. The sea breeze whispered in the pine needles. Overhead, the squirrels ran back and forth, chattering at Blackie. Blackie barked and gave a chase. Jimmy just sat and watched. The dog flashed in and out of the sunlight and the shadows chasing the squirrels. They raced across the limbs above him. Blackie ran until he was tired. Then he trotted back to Jimmy and sat down to rest. Is this how you stay in shape, Jimmy said. Good exercise. Blackie tried to lick Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy dodged. Whoa, he said, I'm not hot enough, or I'm hot enough. Blackie got up and trotted to the edge of another ditch. He looked back at Jimmy and whined. Then he disappeared over the edge. Jimmy followed. At the bottom, Blackie was digging in the sand. Jimmy scrambled down the hole. What do you got, Blackie? Blackie whined and looked up. Then he made a quick, stiff leg jump. He nudged something with his nose. A loud chattering from above him made him back off. A squirrel dotted down the tree. He stopped at a rotted piece of wood and faced Blackie. Jimmy grinned. Whatever Blackie had, the squirrel wanted. Both made several darts back and forth. Finally, the squirrel made a quick leap toward and retreated with what looked like a nut in his mouth. Blackie gave chase, barking furiously. Jimmy blinked. The nut looked awfully big. He glanced overhead. There were no trees with nuts on them. A sudden suspicion sent Jimmy tumbling down to the bit of wood. That nut was the same size as Blackie's clay ball. Remember the clay ball from the very beginning? Looks like they might have found another one. All right, we've got one more chapter, chapter 11. See you later.